Hello guys, Shadow's Rain here and today we have a video regarding a hot topic at the moment and that is skill based matchmaking or SBMM for short. I'm going to be telling you how you can get the edge on it and how you can pub stomp with it. Now for this to work you're going to need some squad mates so right at the bat if you're a solos only player getting dumped by on by laser grouse camping 1000 meters away this is the video for you but I will be making a solos guide soon though so make sure you subscribe for that. Speaking of which we are now at 82 subscribers and that is incredible when you consider the short amount of time we've been on the scene so keep it up and let's see how quickly we can hit that 100 and get the ball really rolling just a disclaimer these are not facts it's just observations I've made it uh, in my time as a warzone player and as a youtuber where I actually watch back my footage often for editing and quality checking you'll find if you have been here a while I am very observant uh, the gameplay is me and Rue ruining people's nights on gunfight at 2 in the morning after a good sort of recording session in Warzone, the fruits of which you will see this week. So, if you don't know what skill based matchmaking is, one, how, and two, when you hit find a game, you are not put in a random queue with the next 140 or so people who hit the same button. No, you're waiting for a lobby which is only taking players who are a similar skill to you based on your KD, spawn, spawn per minute, <laughs> score per minute, and wins. Now, Exclusive Ace and Drifter did a lot of work proving that skill based matchmaking existed even though Infinity Ward said it wasn't there. Activation making their developers appear to be lying. Fancy that. Haven't seen that before. Black Ops 3. <coughs> In their expensive, expensive, in their extensive testing, they used multiple accounts with varying levels of KD and score per minute, and found as individuals, they all had opponents who quality matched the general skill level of the KD that the player in the experiment had. This is a really simple breakdown of it, and their work is not done any justice, justice at all by the description of it. Each playlist, so duos, trios and quads seem to all act differently in terms of how they're determined, your skill and the players you get matched up against. If you're a negative KD player, the skill based matchmaking is going to work in your favour and you don't really need to be focused on the algorithm right now, instead just working out cutting unnecessary deaths from your game. Exclusive Ace and Drifter mentioned they did not know what happens if you do it in groups. I do believe I've figured it out and this is what you do. And no, it's not smurfing or reverse boosting because that's morally wrong. So it comes down to the maths. You want to keep the KD of your squad no higher than the amount of people in the squad. This is for trios. So if you're in trios, the target of your team's combined KD is 3 for the whole squad. So you take your KD and then add that to another person's KD, then add that to the third person's KD. So, for example, let's take my KD, which currently stands at 1.76. Bear in mind, I do dig about with guns that I shouldn't be. Next person is 0.7, and somebody after that is 0.6. This makes the KD of your squad 3.06. Now divide that by 3, because it's trios, so you divide that by how many people are in the squads. And you're going to end up to be put in the lobbies where the typical player is at a 1.02 KD. As a 1.76 player, I'm not going to have any real issues dispatching these peeps to the Gulag. Now I know what you're thinking, that's very selfish because I'm forcing my friends into a higher skill lobby. Well, no, not really, and I'll explain. My role is to be the primary aggressor and slay as many people as possible before th their team can collapse. Often, this means I make the fight a 2v3 or 1v3 for my own squad to collapse and finish the fight in favourable odds should I get downed. On the flip side, if my squad picks up a kill, They've given me an extremely good opportunity to finish the fight, and should I take an L, I should have done enough damage, if not down somebody, for it to be an easy cleanup for the rest of the team. Now, all that being said, there's another reason this is going to work better for your, your team members. People who are typically in the 0.7 KD area are often not bad players. They're actually close to average, and in my experience, their gunplay is actually fine. They are actually decent. People with that level of KD are usually let down by their, by their positioning in and leading up to a fight. This is actually not too difficult to manage in game as so long as you're communicating clearly and everybody knows what every where everybody is. Speaking of which, the A1A is a hyper aggressive team and the only way we get away with that and find success in this camp heavy meta is because of positioning. In quads, I've noticed this works too, but score per minute seems to be a little bit more of an inflex. Ugh, get me words out, Craig. Seems to be a little bit more of an influential factor than KD. 
but so it would seem. I can't confirm that, because if we could confirm that, then the A1A wouldn't need to spend a day's upload slot on this video. But it seems that in quads, skill-based matchmaking skill-based matchmaking, score per minute is used a bit more. Now KD is still an important factor here, so your team's combined KD divided by 4 is still effective here. But to get past skill-based matchmaking here, you need to do a little bit more math if your intention is to bypass it. From playing with different players from multiple skill levels, it feels like it takes the highest skill, sorry, highest score per minute player and your lowest score per minute player and puts you in between. So you'll get matched with a team who is in between there, and it seems to completely ignore the middle two. But like I said, this works in conjunction with the KD metric too. And what I've found, which is a bit strange, is if you have a team composition where you have a low average KD but high score per minute, we end up in lobbies where teams are popping recons for days and camping with grouse a lot more often. Um, if we do have a team comp which is the other way around, so that's a high KD and low score per minute, we actually tend to get lobbies where everybody seems to be taking bounties, scabs and most wanted as a full or strong team. It's really, really strange. So take that for what it, it, it is. Duos was a bit harder to pin down. Score per minute in KD didn't seem to have a massive impact. I tried the 2 KD strategy, obviously given there's two people in that squad. It didn't work efficiently, uh, sorry, effectively to tell a difference in the quality of the opponent, at least not obviously anyway. But to be fair, the KD strap was a question mark anyway because that means I've got to actually find a player who's got a KD of 0 0.02 and that is not a fun experience, not even sandbags that bad. As you can imagine, uh, the next one I went on to was score per minute. Again, only thing that changed was how quickly contracts were getting yoinked off the map and not necessarily the quality of the opponents in a gunfight. However, what did make a massive noticeable difference I found influencing duos lobbies was average wins. Yeah, I went into a few games of duos with Robbo. Our combined KD was nearly 3, making the KD of the average player in the lobby 1.5, which in trios would put you in an absurdly high skill bracket. Robbo has very few wins in comparison to me, Rue, Turner and Fox, uh, even Sandbag. Straight away, lobbies we were getting into, we walked all over, and I thought that was a bit strange. Um, so I thought that was just down to us being good players, but looking back at the footage, the quality of the opposition was profoundly lower than those that I'd faced when pairing with any of the aforementioned players. So I tested it further and I went into a duels with my brother, Apex JGH, who has a solid KD but very few wins. This is mainly because he's more outrageous than me in pushing the boundaries of the meta and tries carrying teams with slugs and pistols. Same again, the quality of the players were poor at best and we stomped them. So with all that being said, uh, a share on this video would be massively appreciated and if Drifter or Ace could investigate with the data and input this video has brought to the discussion, that would be great. Um, you get paid for YouTube, I've got to work a full time job to be able to fund this little adventure. Um, so let's see if we can get in touch to reach them, let's see if we can get that video shared out there and if they could pick that up, that would be absolutely fantastic. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this vid, hit like and let me know and get commenting below with your opinions. At the end of the day, this is technically an opinions video. It's just based on when I've looked through the footage and the teams that we've had, it just seems to be like the lobbies that we've that we've had. And feel free to go through the, my my videos and have a little look, a little selfless plug there and just see the kind of players that we have and see what kind of lobbies we're pulling out. And I will see you in the next video. And uh, yeah, tomorrow is going to be a fun one. We've got a war zone where we are using the Marksman Rifle Air Max. And it is dirty, filthy even. <laughs> right, but anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.